Hey everyone, in this lesson I'm going to talk to you guys about cholesterol synthesis and metabolism. So in this video I'm going to talk to you guys about the purpose of cholesterol, why we actually need cholesterol in our body. I'm also going to talk to you guys about important steps in the cholesterol synthesis pathway, what are some of the critical um, regulatory enzymes in the pathway, how some of our pharmaceutical drugs actually work to regulate cholesterol in our bodies, and also I'm also going to talk to you guys about how cholesterol is stored within our body. So to begin, here is the chemical structure of cholesterol. Cholesterol is actually um, a lipids, which means it's hydrophobic. Um, it's a required precursor for vitamin D production, steroid production. It's required for membrane stability, and it's required for the production of bile salts. Now, cholesterol um, structure of cholesterol is um, characterized by a few different things. One is that it has four non-aromatic rings. It has one carbon double bond. It has one side chain, and it also has one hydroxyl group. Now, approximately 65% of plasma cholesterol is stored as cholesterol ester, and I'll get into that a bit more later as to what cholesterol ester is. And finally, most cholesterol is actually produced in the liver, the adrenal glands, the intestines, and also in the gonads. And most of this is because a lot of these organs are involved in steroid production. So the two beginning precursors in uh, cholesterol synthesis are acetyl-CoA and acetoacetyl-CoA. Now the, um, they actually come together via the enzyme HMG-CoA synthase uh, to produce 3-hydroxy-3-methyl-glutyryl-CoA or HMG-CoA. Now HMG-CoA can um, be used for a couple of different pathways. One, in, if it's in the mitochondria, it can actually be used to produce ketone bodies um, in the liver. Now I'll get into that in another video, um, but if it's in the cytosol, it can actually undergo a process by the enzyme HMG-CoA reductase and produce methylonic acid. Now HMG-CoA reductase is the critically important enzyme in cholesterol synthesis pathway. This enzyme requires two NADPH and it is the rate limiting step, which means it's heavily regulated. Um, it's actually regulated um, by glucagon and AMP. Glucagon and AMP actually inhibit this enzyme. Insulin actually activates HMG-CoA reductase, and it's actually regulated by its expression or its synthesis. And that, um, and its synthesis is actually inhibited by glucagon and AMP, and actually upregulated by insulin as well. Now, its synthesis. HMG-CoA reductase synthesis is actually um, induced by the transcription factor steroid response element binding protein or SREBP. And finally, because this enzyme is a rate limiting, rate -limiting step um, and it's highly regulated, this is actually the target of um, the pharmaceutical drug group known as statins. So you might have heard of levostatin. Statins are cholesterol regulating drugs. They actually help to reduce cholesterol levels in our bodies and this is how it does it. It actually inhibits HMG-CoA reductase so that is something very important for you guys to remember. Once mevalonic acid is produced it'll actually undergo um, or actually go through a pathway known as the mevalonate pathway it requires um, 3 ATP and it produces something known as isopentanyl pyrophosphate. Now isopentanyl pyrophosphate um, actually takes um, six of these isopentanyl pyrophosphates um, and produces squalene. So you actually need six isopentanyl pyrophosphates to produce squalene. Then squalene is actually processed for you through a few reaction steps into lanostrol. And then lanostrol will actually be um, processed via many different reaction steps into cholesterol. So as you can see, I have dashed arrows here, which means I'm skipping over a few steps in this pathway. but these are the important intermediates I want you guys to remember for this um, cholesterol synthesis pathway. And an easy way to remember it, um, M-I-S-L-C, um, M-I-S-L-C. So just try to remember that guys, mevalonic acid, isopentanyl pyrophosphate, squalene, linostrol, and cholesterol. Now cholesterol also acts as a negative feedback regulator on its own production and, and it does that by actually negatively regulating HMG-CoA reductase as well. And it does that by actually inhibiting uh, a protein known as 
SCAP, which is a steroid binding protein. Now, SCAP typically, um, if it's not bound to cholesterol, if cholesterol is not around, if it's not bound to cholesterol, SCAP can actually um, cleave and um, lead to the cleavage and activation of SREBP. However, when cholesterol is around, if it's been produced or if it's in excess, it can actually lead um, to the binding of SCAP. Cholesterol can actually bind to SCAP, so that means SCAP cannot actually cleave, lead to the cleavage and activation of SREBP. So that's how cholesterol actually um, negatively regulates its own production. Now I just want to get into more of the chemistry about some of these um, intermediates. Now um, as you can see mevalonic acid um, can actually be produced um, through the mevalonate pathway into isopentanoyl pyrophosphate. And as I mentioned before, it takes about six isopentanoyl pyrophosphates to make squalene. And you can actually see um, the different parts of this um, isopentanoyl pyrophosphate in squalene. So this section of isopentanoyl pyrophosphate is actually used six times in squalene. So that's how we know there are six isopentanoyl pyrophosphates used in squalene. So squalene, um, is produced um, and then once it's produced, once squalene is produced, this squalene backbone will actually go through circularization to produce um, not the non-aromatic rings of cholesterol via a few different reaction steps into linosterol. Now once we have linosterol you can see it's getting pretty close to what cholesterol looks like but nevertheless linosterol to cholesterol still takes 18 reaction steps to get to cholesterol production. So I just wanted to show you guys just how the chemistry, um, how we go from um, simple monomers into, and the monomers are actually used to form a somewhat, somewhat like a polymer, and that polymer goes through a circularization reaction to get cholesterol. And it takes many, many different reaction steps um, to produce cholesterol. So I don't want you guys to think it's a very simple pathway, it's a very complex pathway. And one final point I want you guys to know is that um, many of these steps, um, especially from squalene um, through linosterol and through cholesterol production, these, um, these steps, or these reaction steps require enzymes that are located on the, um, are located on or near to the endoplasmic reticulum interface. So a lot of these reactions occur at the interface of the endoplasmic reticulum. Now once cholesterol has been produced, um, how is it stored as cholesterol ester? And I talked about cholesterol ester or otherwise known as cholesterol ester. So how is cholesterol actually stored as cholesterol ester? Well it actually um, undergoes um, a reaction through the enzyme ACAT if it's in, this, in the cell. If it's in a cell, um, it undergoes um, a reaction via the enzyme ACAT or acyl-CoA cholesterol acyl transferase, or ACAT, and this occurs at the ER. Now, what it does is it actually takes the acyl um, chain from acyl-CoA and adds it to the hydroxyl group of the cholesterol to form a cholesterol ester, so that's the storage form of cholesterol. Now, if, it's not in, if cholesterol is not in the cell, if it's in the extracellular environment, um, it actually is operated or acted on by a different enzyme known as LCAT, um, which is lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase. And this occurs in the serum and it actually uses um, phosphatidylcholine. It uses an acyl group from the phosphatidylcholine to attach to the hydroxyl group of the cholesterol to form cholesterol ester. Now, as I mentioned before, cholesterol ester is very important to know because approximately 65% of plasma cholesterol is actually stored as this enzyme or as this um, cholesterol ester. Now once you have cholesterol ester um, stored, how does it actually go back to cholesterol? Well, it, it actually does that by an enzyme known as cholesterol esterase, which is very easy to remember. Um, so cholesterol esterase actually acts on cholesterol ester, removes the acyl group, and forms cholesterol again in its active form. Anyways, guys, that was a quick look at the cholesterol synthesis pathway. I hope you found, that, uh, hope you found this video helpful. And anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.